Dear students, welcome to the session on basics for four year series under the interval minus pi to pi. In this session, we are going to learn some basic concepts which is helpful to solve problems under minus pi to pi. It can be applicable for in general minus L to L. Let us go into the session. The definition of Fourier series in general in the interval C, C plus 2L, it can be expressed as an infinite trigonometric series of this form. So, in general, we can write this as and this equation 1 is called as Fourier series for the function f of x at the interval c, c plus 2L. If you want to find the length of the interval, you have to subtract the upper limit by lower limit that is c plus 2L minus c. So, your length is 2L and throughout this Fourier series, my half length is important. So, half length is going to be L and now the question arises: what is theta? Theta is nothing but pi x divided by your half length. So, here my half length is L in general. So, pi x by L. I can replace the theta by pi x by L and this a naught a n b n are called as Fourier coefficients. We are going to see how to find a naught a n b n in the forthcoming slides. So, we can write this f of x in general in the interval c comma c plus 2L where a naught a n and b n can be represented as follows. So, a naught is 1 by L that is 1 by half of the length c to c plus 2L always we represent the lower limit and upper limit like this f of x dx. A n is going to be 1 by L c to c plus 2 L. We have f of x and this cos n pi x by L. We are substituting the theta value dx. Similarly, b n is going to be 1 by L integral c to c plus 2 L f of x sin n pi x by L. So, this a naught a n b n is called as Euler's formula for Fourier coefficients. Now, our concern is minus pi to pi. This is the formula for general c comma c plus 2L. So, that means now my lower limit is going to be minus pi and my upper limit is going to be plus pi. So, what will happen now? The c is going to be replaced by minus pi. Then c plus 2L will be replaced by minus pi and here the length is 2 pi. So, half length is pi. So, 2 into pi. When we add my upper limit is going to be pi and my lower limit is going to be minus pi. Therefore, this formula simply c is replaced by minus pi, c plus 2L is replaced by plus pi and then L is replaced by pi. So, this n pi x by L will become n pi x divided by pi. Pi pi will get cancelled it will become simply nx. So, at the interval minus pi comma pi, my Fourier series will become simply a naught by 2 since n pi x by L will become n pi x by pi that is nx so, an cos nx and summation n equal to 1 to infinity bn sin nx and then the coefficients become simply f of x for a n it is f of x into cos n x, b n it is going to be f of x into sin n x. Next, we use for MCQ this formula root mean square value. Usually it is represented by y bar. Now I am taking the general interval a comma b, then this y bar is defined as square root of 1 by upper limit minus lower limit integral a to b f of x whole square dx and our limit is going to be minus pi to pi right now. So, it will become 1 by b minus a that is 1 by pi minus of minus pi that is 1 by 2 pi. So, my formula is going to be square root of 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi f of x all square dx. This is my root mean square value or people simply say it as RMS value. Next, we use this partial identity to do deduction for higher powers. In general, 
for the interval a comma b we are going to mention it as a not square by 4 plus 1 by 2 summation n equal to 1 to infinity a n square plus b n square is equal to 1 by b minus a integral a to b f of x whole square dx the right hand side is nothing but y bar square my square of rms value now our concern is minus pi to pi in this case my 1 by b minus a will become 1 by pi minus of minus pi so it is going to be 1 by 2 pi so i can express this in the interval minus pi to pi with a period 1 by 2 pi as follows next in the interval general minus l comma l or in specific minus pi comma pi we are going to use this trick odd functions and even functions do you remember in our school days we learned what is mean by odd and even function if a function is said to be even if a given function f of x if i replace x by minus x still if i get my same f of x then it is going to be an even function similarly for the function f of x if i replace x by minus x if i get minus f of x then it is going to be odd function i hope you understand now for our problem solving sessions we need to remember simple way we don't want to verify all these things let us see what are all the even functions and what are all the odd functions now you take x if the power is going to be even it is going to be an even function suppose x square x power 4 x power 6 etc in general x power 2n then do you remember guys mod x is always even function because when i take f of x equal to mod x either you give minus value or plus value as input then the mod x will always give the same output it is always positive therefore mod x is an even function so under minus pi to pi or even under the general interval minus l to l x power even number that is in general x power 2n mod x and constants because if you take f of x equal to 2 now even if you put f of minus x 2 will never change so constants is also even function then when we go for trigonometric when i take cos x i'll write cos of minus x we know cos of minus theta is cos theta so we'll get cos x it's nothing but my f of x so cos x in general cos n x is going to be an even function then now you would have guessed what is the data for odd functions if a function with odd power like x x cube x power 5 etc in general x power 2n minus 1 or x power 2n plus 1 i can say it as odd function next for the trigonometric case we would have considered sin x because f of minus x is going to be sin minus x i'll write minus sin x and here i can check this example suppose i take f of x equal to x cube then f of minus x is going to be minus x whole cube it is minus x cube that is my minus f of x hope you understand the clear idea about odd functions and even functions so we have seen the examples when the function is given directly like x or x square etc if suppose the function is splitted in the particular interval for example see the following remark if f of x is the function under the interval minus pi to pi it is splitted into f1 of x and f2 of x two different function in a particular limit now how to find whether it is an odd function or even function take the function f1 of x and then replace x by minus x so f1 of minus x if it gives f2 of x then i will say it as an even function if f1 of minus x is giving minus f2 of x if f1 of minus x gives minus f2 of x then i will say the function is an odd function similarly this can be used for any general limit minus l to l let us see an example and whenever we do this f1 of minus x is equal to f2 of x the limit automatically changes like when you replace x by minus x my limit will change to 0 to pi here my limit will change to minus pi to 0 so now let us consider f1 of x as pi plus 2x f2 of x as pi minus 2x when you replace x by minus x 
my f1 of x become pi minus 2x that is my f2 of x i can immediately say f of x is an even function now it is very interesting there are some functions which is neither odd neither odd nor even for example suppose you take x x is an odd function now when you add x cube it is still odd function so now i am adding several terms on odd function still it is an odd function now suppose just you are adding one even function x square to the series of odd function then now what will happen the function f of x becomes neither odd nor even the same rule applicable for subtracting so i can take plus or minus so now i can say this simply if f of x is going to be set of odd functions with plus or minus at least one even function and vice versa which have lot of even functions with at least plus or minus one odd function then it is going to be neither odd nor even why the reason when you go for f of minus x it would be neither equal to f of x and nor equal to minus f of x it will change into a new function for example you take f of x equal to x it's going to be odd function f of x equal to x square it is going to be even function now if i consider f of x equal to x plus x square if i replace x by minus x i'll be getting minus x plus minus x whole square that is minus x plus x square now it is crystal clear this is not equal to f of x and not equal to minus f of x it is a new function so this is neither odd nor even hope you get a clear idea about neither odd nor even function there is only one function in the world which is either odd and even function but it is very obvious you would have guessed now what is it a function f of x is zero so i can take it as either odd function or even function so since it is obvious we are not going to bother about it we recall a very very basic property which we learned in our school for a minus a to a f of x dx i can write it as zero if the function f of x is odd and two times zero to a f of x dx if the function is even now i can implement this for my interval minus pi comma pi and i am going to use this property to make the problem simple because when you try to solve a problem under minus pi lot of confusions will come because when you substitute the limit minus pi sometime you may do errors because we are going to get cos sin you may do some errors so if you convert this problem into 0 comma pi 100% you will not do errors number we know that if n is even that is cos 2 pi cos 4 pi etc all these things my answer is going to be 1 if n is odd like cos pi cos 3 pi etc my answer is going to be minus 1 so what i am going to say simply if i get cos n pi when n is an integer i will write minus 1 whole power n this suits very well when n is even i'll be getting plus 1 when n is odd i'll be getting minus 1 so n is an integer so these are all some basic things which we needed for our problem solving session now minus 1 whole power n into minus 1 whole power n it is going to be minus 1 whole power 2n so i don't want to worry about this 2n i'll simply see minus 1 whole square i can rewrite this minus 1 whole square whole power n it will become 1 power n 1 power anything is simply 1 these are all some basic ideas which we need for the problems and regarding the odd even functions we see about addition subtraction i'm going to consider two functions f of x and g of x and i'm going to multiply here similarly <coughs> i'm going to divide the two functions now we have to know what will happen when i multiply two odd or even functions so i'm simply representing odd function as o even function as e now case 1 odd function into odd function i'll get even function you see an example x into x is x square next odd function into even function or even function into odd function x into x square it is going to be always odd function 
that is my x cube similarly if i have even into even it is obvious it is going to be even function that is x square into x square is x power 4 so simply i conclude odd into odd even even into even even either odd into even or even into odd i will be always getting odd function <coughs> Similarly, for division also, it is very easy to see odd by odd, x cube by x, it is going to be an even function, x square, even function by even function, x power 4 by x square, it is going to be x square, still it is even. Now finally, odd by even or even by odd, I will take an example, x square by x, it is always going to be an odd function. So what I say, if it is same, odd into odd, it will be getting even, even into even, it will be getting even, odd by odd or even by even. I'll always get even. If you have a different pair, odd into even or even into odd, similarly odd by even or even by odd, always we get odd function. If you understand this concept, it is very helpful for you in problem solving session students. Now let us see this property. Now we are going to deal with my a naught, a n, b n. Now you see in a naught, f of x is the function. In a n, f of x cos n x and b n f of x sin n x. Now suppose my f of x is an odd function, then by this property my answer is going to be 0. Next, when we calculate a n, f of x is an odd function, cos is an even function, odd into even is going to be odd. So therefore my f of x into cos n x is also odd function. Immediately by property, I'll say this is 0. Now, when we come here, f of x is an odd function, sin is also odd function, odd into odd, it is going to be even, so I'll say this as even function. When it is a even function, then I can write this as 2 times 0 to pi, the given function into dx. Hope you understand, that's what I'm going to show here. If f of x is an odd function, then f of cos n x is also an odd function, then if f of x is an odd function, f of x into sin n x is an even function. So, a naught is going to be 0 and a n is going to be 0 and b n is going to be 2 times 1 by pi 0 to pi f of x sin n x. So, now you see if you use this property, you will enjoy the problem. a naught will become 0 immediately, a n will become 0 immediately, b n I have to find that is also tension free. I will write 2 by pi 0 to pi. I never use the negative limit minus pi. Hope you understand. Now similarly, if f of x is an even function, then a naught is simply f of x. It is going to be even function and a n is f of x cos n x. b n is going to be f of x sin n x. Now if a naught is even function, by the property, I am going to write 2 times 0 to pi f of x dx. Now, this is even function. Cos is also even function. My answer is going to be a even function. So, here also I will write 2 times 0 to pi the function into dx. This is my function. When the third case, f of x is even, sin is odd, odd into even, it is going to be odd function. Immediately by property, I will say bn0. So now, I am going to explain the same in a typed version. If f of x is even, f of cos n x is also even. If f of x is even, f of sin n x is an odd function. So a naught can be represented as 2 times 1 by pi 0 to pi f of x dx. a n can be represented as 2 times 1 by pi 0 to pi f of x cos n x dx. And b n is going to be 0 because even function into odd function is odd. My answer is 0. So now you see this makes the problem very easy. If my function is an odd function, then a naught 0, a n 0. If my function is an even function, b n 0. But now, if your function is neither odd nor even, then no other choice. Find a naught, a n, b n. Hope you understand. So, I am representing this in a single line. Use this property, enjoy your problem in a simple way. Thank you students. We'll meet in the video on problems under minus pi to pi. Thank you. Subscribe our channel, share to your friends. If you have any doubts, post in the comments. We are there to help you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.